Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about 2D plots using the library or um, what you might call a module called matplotlib, which is written for Python. And uh, this is going to make life very easy for visualization. And uh, that is one of the big advantages of Python over something like C++ that in Python you can easily write code and visualize your data. And this matplot library is very efficient and very great. And the coding of it is actually almost identical, I would say, to MATLAB coding. So if you know some MATLAB, matplotlib is going to be almost uh, exactly identical. So it's not really hard to uh, create something. So here, I'm going to show you three different examples. One is creating subplots. So let's say I want to uh, plot two different functions. One is sine, the other one is cosine. And I put them in two separate subplots. So what I do, I create some x data between 0 to 2 pi and with 30 data points. I define two functions, y and z sine and cosine of x, and then I create a figure object using figure and open parentheses. Then I pass the subplot command. 2 and 1 means what? It means I have two rows of figures or axes and one column, right? So they're going to be below each other. And then go to the first one and go ahead and plot x and y, or y versus x. Go ahead and act x label and y label as x and y. Go ahead and turn the grid on. Go ahead and add y equals sine of x as the title. And once you're done, go to the second axis, plot z versus x. Again, add x and y, add the grid, add title, and show the results, right? So if I do this part, then exactly I will get what I'm supposed to get. So let's go ahead and do that. But again, I'm telling you, you need to import from the matplotlib.pyplot, you need to import a bunch of different commands. So I just went ahead and imported everything. So when you say import the star, it means import everything. And here, I'm going to go and create my subplots that you can see here, right? So this is sine, that's x, and here this x and this title kind of going into each other. But you clearly see that I have beautiful sine and cosine function for one period, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so this is my subplot. The next thing I can do is... To show you control over what? Over um, basically uh, colors, right? So here, let's say, instead of two separate subplots, I want to put the uh, two graphs, uh, sine and cosine, on the same plot, but using different line characteristic colors, markers, and so on, and using a legend. So this time I create another figure, and then I plot x and y, and then I plot x and z. In MATLAB, between these two, you need to use the command hold on so that the new axis is not, the new graph is not going to overwrite the previous one. In uh, pyplotlib, you do not need that. You can just go ahead and plot x and y, and if you write after that command plot x and z, it's going to be over that. Now, of course, you want to show different colors and markers or something so you can distinguish between them. So here, I'm saying the color is red. So the first option line spec is color red. The line style is dash line, dash dash. So you're going to get disconnected lines. And the marker is S, which is a square. So connect squares, markers with dash lines and make sure the color is red. Now here I give my uh, axis, my graph, a label. So when later I call the legend command, I can directly, this legend is going to take over those labels and label my graphs. So I'm not going to put the name sine and cosine into the legend. I put them into the plot command. There is an extra option of label into the plot command. Then I have the line width, just like MATLAB. Of course, you do not need to pass them inside uh, single or double quotations. And there is no capital letter here. So here I use two pixel. Here I use three pixel. 
and then you can use marker edge color which i use black for both of them uh, for sorry for the top one and then i have marker face color which is black for the bottom one so the bottom one inside the marker is going to be black the top one the uh, preference the, uh, the edges of the marker is going to be black but what is the second one it's going to be blue the line style is dot dot right so use column and the objects are circles okay i have an x label i have a legend which is going to take over these labels and write them for you and i say the location is best okay which is exactly like matlab put it wherever that is best and not occluding the rest of the information and the other big difference between matlab and pyplotlib is this show command if you do not use this show command you have created everything, but guess what? If I go ahead and comment this out and I run the code, everything is there, but you're not going to see anything. So until you say show, that figure, those axes are not going to be shown. <laughs> so this is very mandatory to use the show command. Otherwise, you're not going to see anything, okay? So let me show you that one. Uh, oh, yeah, I... Uh, removed X and Y by commenting them out. So let me go ahead and uh, uncomment the first part. Uh, so this is the first one. You can close it, then the second one opens. And you clearly can see that the sign function is the squares with black edges. And the pixel uh, we're lined with is two and is dash line and it's red. The second one is blue circles connected with dotted lines and the line width is three. Here is your legend. Here is your X axis, X label, and there is no grid here. So we didn't use the grid command. So the grid is not on. If you want, you can turn it on if you want. Right. So we can go ahead and add the grid. And if you want, we can mess up with some stuff. So let's say you don't want dash line, you want solid line. So just go ahead and use a single line like this. So now they are connected with solid lines, right? And then if you want, you can change any color as well here. So instead of uh, filling the inside of it with black, maybe you want to fill it with green, right? So you can go ahead and uh, change anything that you want. And here, let's do it again right so you clearly can see now the circles are filled with green and now i have solid line connection right i have solid line connection now if you get rid of this single line then you will not have any connection you only have the markers so it kind of looks like a scatter plot and there is no connection okay so make sure when you provide the color and the shape of the marker in between them you provide the connection type okay again let me show you that if you don't use anything between them see what happens you see that there is no connection now so make sure you provide some connection if you really want to see the trend better all unless you really want to see it this way for which i recommend use the scatter plot so I would always provide something, okay, here. So this is the color options and everything. And the last thing we want to do is a scatter plot. So everything is the same. Here I want to do a scatter plot of the sign function. And the command to use is a scatter instead of plot. Everything else is exactly the same. And here, if we go ahead and do the uh, scatter plot, so look here. That's my subplots. This is my... Um, uh, color options and this is my what my scatter plot that you see of course there is no connection the data are just spread over right so here is what creating plot so if you want to draw dots over a circle for example you can use parametric function right create theta to go between 0 to 2 pi and then provide a radius make one of them sine make one of them cosine and do a scatter plot right i can do it that way if you want, let me add it just as another option to make it more interesting for you. So here, let's say I want to draw a scatter plot of a circle. So I say theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And if you want, you can use 2 pi here. So you just need to do 2 and then what? 
do you remember that you have the pi that for which you need to import the math and I already have math, right? So if I use math.pi, that is going to be your actual pi and then I can provide some radius, let's say two units and then uh, uh, let's say x is basically r times cosine of theta and then y is r times sine of theta and then I can do a scatter plot of x versus y and everything right so let's go ahead and add that over here and here I'm gonna comment this part out so we have a circle here right so this is gonna be a circle scatter plot center that origin with the radius of two and I assume that is good enough to go so let's go ahead and do that here so this one this one and you see this is my what this is my scatter plot here and uh, of course uh, because the aspect ratio is not one to one you might see what you might see it as an ellipse but there is an option if you want to change the axis limits and if you want to make the axis a square so it looks more of a um, circle to you or you can do the aspect ratio yourself by just stretching the picture like that and now this is more of a circle of course i would add more uh, data points to make it closer to uh, a circle right and let me show you since i mentioned the uh, axis uh, limits and the axis is square let me show you the commands for that as well okay so here i added them for you so you can see them so the commands are x limit and y limit just like MATLAB, and you have to pass the minimum and the maximum number and if you want to set the axis to be equal aspect ratio you have to add an axis so you can do that using the axis command so you say x equal axis just like this figure you add an axis and then you say that axis set aspect ratio method is what equal that's all you need to do so that's the same as axis square in MATLAB x set aspect ratio equal that will make the size of the uh, two limits to be the same so you're gonna see it as a real circle instead of an ellipse and I added more points so it looks more beautiful and I set the limits to be from those numbers I want instead of automatically determined by MATLAB so here let's go ahead and uh, run this for you and uh, here is this one, here is this guy, and there we go. You see, it's a beautiful what? It's a beautiful circle that you can see. The only thing is there is a typo here, which I can always go ahead and fix it. So hopefully this video is useful to you, and I will see you in my next lecture. Thank you so much.